Thank you, and uh, good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure, really a great pleasure to be here. Uh, when I first saw this view uh, from exactly this spot, I was as dumbstruck, I think, as the original colonists were who first saw it having battled their way up Libby Hill uh, through the forests. Um, a number of the people who were then involved had lived in Petersham and in Richmond, uh, below the brow of Richmond Hill above the Thames. And when they crested this hill and saw that view, uh, we're told, and it may be apocryphal, but I like to think it's true, that they turned to each other and said, my God, it's Richmond. And uh, all the consequences then followed. But what is certainly true, and struck me from the first second that I saw this view, is that this view, in a way, defines your Richmond, and it also defines the relationship between the two Richmonds, yours and mine. And the reason is the view, but behind the view lies much else as well. Our view of the Thames, the matchless Vale of Thames, uh, that was threatened throughout the 18th and 19th century, and then right at the beginning of the 20th century, 1902 to be precise, in November, uh, local people and local communities all along the riverfront and Richmond Hill uh, created such a lot of pressure. It was one of the first examples of environmental campaigning. And they applied that pressure to the powers that were, and fortunately they got quite a lot of support. And a private member's bill, which I'm actually holding here, uh, was introduced into the then House of Lords, and it starts, whereas the prospect from Richmond Hill over the valley of the, rich, of the River Thames is of great natural beauty, and therefore this act is to preserve it. Now, what I would say about that was that bill in 1902 drew a line. It prevented the worst excesses of what was then hectic building development all along the Thames. Uh, there was a proposal, for example, that on one of the small islands in the Thames, Eel Pie Island, that a very large advertisement should be raised by a Chicago cigar manufacturer. <laughs> and it was going to be the rage of the day because it was electronically illuminated. <laughs> and I think that was the final blow, really. <laughs> was really one cigar too many and uh, we decided that something had really to be done but the bill although it passed and it had uh, support from many parts of society um, and it did draw a line but it really looking back marked the beginning of a campaign because the truth with any environmental shared view is that in order to protect it you have you really have to have eternal vigilance uh, you have to keep on campaigning and you have to keep on caring about it in richmond as i'm sure is true here we're not against development in the father thames trust uh, or indeed in the arcadia program of the thames but we really do draw the line that development has got in the end to enhance the commonality of view and not to prevent it. Because once you lose a commonality of view like that, you really have lost it. It's very, very, very difficult to recover it. Uh, what we did find was that throughout the 20th century, there were incursions into the view, and uh, some of them were very understandable during the Second World War, for example. But uh, the campaign continued, and I'm delighted to be able to report to you that in the last 10 years we've made enormous strides and uh, a lot of companies for example have given charitable donations through the Father Thames Trust and we've been able to spend close on five and a half million pounds which is quite a lot of money in enhancing the view and enhancing access to the view and enhancing education around the view because we found that a key thing was to widen the concept of who really are the stakeholders of a shared view, a shared inheritance like this. Of course, it's people who live up here on the hill. And some of you I know do live up here on the hill. And when we campaign in Richmond, people who live on Richmond Hill are always at the forefront of the efforts that are made. 
but actually it's the children, it's the schools, it's the visitors, it's everybody actually who has a stake in a shared inheritance which defines you and makes you much more attractive and valuable than you otherwise could be. So I wish you every good fortune with this project. Uh, anything that I can do from my side of the pond <laughs> to help, I will be delighted to try and do. And I'm absolutely sure that you will find a way through it, uh, that you will actually win. Because, and I will close on this, that one of the things which um, we have learned in the campaign in Richmond and on the Thames is that when people actually are alerted to the loss, to the danger of something of this value, uh, two things happen. First of all, people are surprised and maybe shocked. And then they turn to things which can be done practically. What can I do? What can we do in our community to try and find a way through? And negotiations start, dialogue begins, and the result is positive. So I feel confident about the outcome here, and I look forward to returning in due course uh, to be told that uh, actually the view is safe. Thank you.